Welcome to Healing Miracles. God is so good and deserving of all our Amen. love. I'm Joan, and we have an awesome program for you today. Our special guest is Tony Perez. Let's introduce him to you. Welcome, Tony. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Good to be here. Amen. Amen. Tony, uh, until you became a Christian, you were a very rebellious person, and you got yourself into trouble with the law, and you were shot at. You were shot. You actually were wounded. You were stabbed many times. You were run over by a car. You were seriously burned. And the list goes on and on. But God had a different plan for you. And, and he's an awesome God. Amen. He's an awesome Amen. God. But, Tony, before we share your testimony, let's just bow our heads and ask Amen. for a blessing on this program. Father, thank we thank you. We thank you. We, we thank you for saving Tony and so many like him, including myself, Lord. Father, we are only saved and washed from our sins by the shed blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. And we are forgiven by that same blood. Thank you, Lord. And now we turn this program over to you, and we ask your anointing on it. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Tony, let's go back to your childhood, because that's where it all began. That's where all amen. the problems began. Is that right? Yeah, yeah you know... I don't believe people are born bad. You learn as you go to be bad for whatever reason. Um, it, but there are people, I believe, that are born with a rebellious nature, and they're more adventurous than other people. So they'll they'll go further uh, towards the edge, if you will. And and, and I believe it takes God. You know, to bring them back to 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 where we were created to serve the Lord. But let me say this before we go any further. People often tell me you have a tremendous testimony, and, and I say no. To me, a tremendous testimony would be a person that would be able to say, you know, I'm 30 years old, I'm 40 years old, I'm whatever. And God has kept me all these years. I don't know what it is to experience that. To me, that's a good testimony. Um, my mother prayed. I remember my mother praying a lot for me, but but it didn't really it it didn't really change anything because I was not really told about Jesus. I was told about saying this one and that one and the other, but I I, I was never told about Jesus. And, and nobody's not at gonna all? make this. The Jesus that I, I knew was hanging on a cross. And he was the, still on the nail to the cross. And he was still on the cross. Mm -hmm. um, but I do, remember, I do remember many, many mornings uh, stumbling home, 3, 4, 5 o'clock in the morning, and, and hearing my mama praying for me. That, that much I do remember. And it always baffled me how people can can get caught up in, in asking God to do this, that, and the other for them when they don't go directly to Jesus. That's right. And so uh, it didn't take, and they were always after me, go to church, uh, go to this, and I said, no, I don't want to. Mm -hmm. that, that man puts on his pants the same way I do, and I'm not going to go tell him anything that I did. Are oh, you talking uh, about confession in a Catholic church? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So that was your background, Catholic Church. If you're, you know, from my culture back in Arizona, you, you don't have a choice. Mm -hmm. uh, you're, you're, you're born a Catholic. Mm -hmm. um, but I was never interested in it. So whenever I could, I made a beeline um, elsewhere. It, it wasn't uncommon for, for my folks to go look for me and I was nowhere to be found. There was a, a creek uh, about four or five miles from town and, and that's where they'd find me. I, I, I just wanted to get away from people. How old were you then, Tony? <sighs> Eight, nine. And you already um, felt that something was void in your life. You were looking for something. I did not know what it was, but yes, mm -hmm. I, I was definitely looking for something. Most people grow up looking for something. And if, if you don't have somebody to tell you, you, you're looking for Jesus, let me show you the way, uh, they're going to try everything. 
and I did from a very early, uh, I was born and raised in a town where my house was like 10 blocks from the Mexican border. Now, in Mexico, there's no such thing as an age limit. If you have the money, you got it. So you can drink. You can drink. Do drugs, you can, you do, can do whatever you want, you want to. Mm -hmm. Out in um, the open. You know, uh, if a cop wants to bother you, a little kid, you just give him fifty cents, and you know, it, it was it was um, it was a bad scene. Mm -hmm. And I remember many a times that I I had purposed in my mind, for instance, to go to the movies. And, and uh, I'd be going out the door, and I would hear my mom say, now don't go running across the border to do this, that, and the other. And I would, I, I would think, Joan, why did you have to do that? That was a good movie I wanted to see. Now I have to go do that. And, and, and I would go do that, you know. So you had no problem crossing the border? No. Ever? No. Okay. Um, there was a spot, my favorite spot, and I, I uh, for a dollar, in those days, for a dollar, I would get a quart of tequila, a pack of cigarettes, a thing of, of gum, and I'd have a couple of cents left over. So I, I would get my tequila and I'd go to this part in the border and I'd throw my bottle over the thing and, and sometimes I'd go around and walk through the customs, you know, and, and uh, then I'd go get my bottle in. So you're buying this on the American side? Oh, on the Mexican side. Oh, the Mexican side. And throwing and it over, over there. To the, oh, okay. And uh, there was a space of about six, seven blocks of nothing, desert mesquite mm -hmm. bushes and and it wasn't uncommon for me to wake up the next day and under a bush with my body <laughs> yeah and i was 10 gone, 11 you know. be gone all night yeah oh my um, goodness I, I you know i i um it was just a bad scene mm -hmm. i i uh i don't believe people are born alcoholics i think that's a lie from the pit of hell mm -hmm. uh i don't believe it's in your genes it's a family curse that's generational that's thing. Right. That's right. Uh, this I learned much later. Mm -hmm. But this thing of uh, you're sick, it's a sick. No, no, I, I take that to the dumpster. I don't want to hear it because. Tony, you know. can we stop right here for sure. a moment and talk just a little bit about a family curse? Because some people don't understand what that means. What does that mean? And how do you break it? Well, first of all, you have to write such a thing. Mm -hmm. if, if you don't deal with the fact that. You'll never want to face it, and, and, and let's face it, most people want to be protective of their family. Yes. A, as a child, my mom used to take me to, to a, a brujo. A, a what? A, a brujo. It's what a, is that? It's like a witch doctor. Really? The purpose I, I've shared, uh, I'm not really sure why she used to take me there. And I was a little tight, but I remember him doing his his indentations and all this heebie-jeebie thing and, and he would, I remember so well these black feathers that he had. Was, was he by any chance um, American Indian? It, it, Joan, in, in that part of Arizona, a lot of the native, a lot of the natives, let's put it that way, when Arizona became a state, some of them happened to have fallen on the Mexican side and some on the American side. Oh. So, and in the native culture, there, there there's uh, a lot of spiritualism. Mm -hmm. A lot of spiritualism. There sure is. And so I, she would take me and he would do this thing, you know, over my body with these feathers and, and this long knife. I, the several times that he, my mom took me there, he, I remember him. And, uh, and Did that I, frighten you? I don't remember. Oh, okay. I don't think I was frightened. I, you know, I tell people I, w I was always too dumb to be scared of anything. Um, I didn't have enough sense. But that, I think, opened the door. I would say so, Tony. Yes. That opened the door. Most and, definitely. And maybe she did it in ignorance. Oh, I'm sure. I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. but, but like I said, I don't know the reason why we went there. All I know is that we went there quite a few times, because I remember off, I, I knew, you know, as a little kid, oh yeah, we turned this street and, and mm -hmm. you'll be there. And um, I never paid attention to that until many, many, many years later that, that uh, I became a, a born again believer. Uh, I accepted the Lord, I was uh, 33. And by that time, I had spent a, a 
cumulative 11 years in different penitentiaries and different prisons and in and th and three different insane asylums because they thought I was crazy, which I was. I mean, when, when you're serving the devil, you're not sane. So you're saying that you were serving the devil. You, f you feel you, because of all these things that came into your life. Tell us, back up a little bit here and tell us when you got involved with drugs and, you know, you told us you were drinking at a very young age and then you started selling drugs also? At, at, um, at the age of about 12, and you have to remember, this is back in 57, 58 now. Uh, drugs weren't as out in the open as they are today. But I started, I started with, with marijuana. And uh, in that part of the country, there's a lot of peyote, what which is, is a hallucinogen. Uh, oh. It's like around here in the south, the uh, wild mushrooms. You oh, know, and it's either. like LSD oh. sort of. Mm -hmm. Thing. And uh, so I started experimenting with that, and I realized um, there's money in this. And it, it was very easy for me to start bringing little, you know, quantities, quantities over. across. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, one thing led to another, and, you know, uh, the devil is a liar. Absolutely. Big time. And, and he, I believe, I sincerely believe, see, before the devil can do anything. Since he is a created being, since, since my Lord created him, I believe that before the devil does anything, he has to present this list to God. And the Lord says, okay, you can do this one. No, this one you definitely cannot do. This one you can't, you know. So he, ha he has to have sort a of permission. As, as he did with Job. As mm -hmm. he did with Job. Mm -hmm. And uh, for whatever reason, I, I, I got away with a lot of stuff that I shouldn't have. And, and what that did was get, got me deeper into it. And, and with, with drugs, there's a lot of crime. Yeah, always. And, and a lot of violence and a mm -hmm. lot of, um, just a lot of hellacious, Satan, demonic things that, ha that happen. Life has no value. Uh, you, you learn to worship the dollar bill and, and uh, and money is everything when you're in the world. Well, tell us a little bit about the money you were making and what you did with it and when you were first arrested for drugs, for drug dealing. You know, I never really, I was arrested a lot mm -hmm. and they, they could never pin. Oh, they couldn't prove it. And they kept telling me, sooner or later, we're going to catch you. Mm -hmm. I promise you. We, and, and they were... And that was a tease in that they would, I'd be walking down the street and the next thing I know they're throwing me against the wall and if I was carrying something, they'd dump it out and, and I says, you're stupid. I said, if, if you'd have gotten me earlier, I just dropped, I just dropped it. Mm, you know, okay. I just made my dropper. I'm on my way to pick up. You should have waited. And I would tease these people mm -hmm. and they swore up and down and a little you know, one or two muddy wine cigarettes or, or, or uh, illegal uh, pharmaceutical drugs was no major thing, you know. So they and, couldn't arrest you on that? No, and, mm -hmm. and I did what I call head sub time, you know, you just go to prison to rest for, you know, a few months and, you know. I, I did... Um, I did a lot of stupid things, Joan, and, and uh, one of the last times that I got arrested, um, I was telling um, my wife, I was, I was recalling, they, they, they were trying to run my time concurrent. Oh, to keep you in prison longer. Mm -hmm. And if that would have been the case, I had about like five, 20 year, and I said, you know, I, I'd just be thinking about parole about now. This was... In the 50s. You know, no, this no. was uh, about the mix middle 60s, okay. 66, actually. Well, it's a long time ago. Yeah. And I said, I would just now, they would just now be thinking of maybe we ought to consider him for a parole type of thing. But the Lord had other plans. Amen. The lie that the devil uses is, and, and I don't know where I picked this up from. I had an understanding. I knew there was a God, you know, and I knew there was a devil. Mm -hmm. Somehow, in my twisted mind, I figured God is for the good people, 
and the devil is for the bad people. And um, I knew I wasn't a good person, so I figured I fall into this category, so I'm going to be good at being bad. <laughs> and, I pra and I was good at being bad because I didn't realize I had a choice. You know what I'm saying? I, I did not know that I, that I had a choice. I used to daydream. While I was waiting for a drop or on my way to, to do one of my jobs or whatever, I, I, would, I would daydream that I would be helping people. But this was, this was a fantasy. It, in those circles, you can't share stuff like that because it, it's a sign of weakness, and next thing you know, you're dead. But I would fantasize. And one of my favorite w ones was that, that I'd be helping elderly people. Um, it, it was a, a need that I had to be good, but I didn't know how. I did not know how. And I wanted to be good, but then I say, no, I, I, I must be, I got to lighten up on the drugs a little bit. It's got to be that. But you know what? Now looking back, it was the Lord tugging in my heartstrings. Yes. Mm -hmm. And there's people that the devil has lied to you and told you, You've done too much. You've been too bad. You 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 do, you have no recourse but to follow Satan. That's a lie from the pit of hell. And I'm here to just the, the the main reason I'm here is to tell people, if God changed my life, He can change anybody. Anybody. I don't care how many years you've used drugs. I don't care how how bad an alcoholic you've been. I don't care how bad of a thief. I don't care. Uh, you know, I went to prison for forgery, and I was supposed to be in there for a long time. Uh, you don't mess with a U.S. mail and that sort of thing, and, and, and I did, and, and praise God, you know, I, I didn't do that much time. I, I was like four years that, that I was in before they, you know, turned me loose. But, but I had done like 11 years of, you know, I was doing time in the installment plan. You were all over the country too, weren't you? <laughs> I, I was. Um, oh, I've been in jails in, from the mm -hmm. Cook County in Chicago to Lincoln Heights in California. I, and I, I can tell you this. Prison does not rehabilitate anybody. It doesn't. Wh what you do in prison, you learn to be a better crook. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I have heard of these jailhouse conversions. Yes. Uh, and, and a lot of these people are sincere. Mm -hmm. But sincerity comes from the heart, which is the soul, and you need a spiritual experience, not a soulish experience. Yes. And uh, again, if God saved me, everybody else is a piece of cake. Mm -hmm. I, I want to read a scripture here. Um, this is First uh, Timothy, one, thirteen. 12. Oh, twelve. It starts at twelve. I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has enabled me because he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry. Amen. Amen. Although I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, persecutor and, and injurious, but I obtained mercy because I did it in ignorance and in unbelief. And there is, uh, in the uh, margin here, it says, also a violent, arrogant man. And then it goes on to say, and the grace of our Lord was exceedingly abundant Amen. with faith and love. love through Jesus Christ. Praise God. Um, I also want, you were talking about, I want to talk about this a little bit, because you had mentioned um, about some of the dangers of dealing drugs. And how God saved you so many times from death. Amen. You were shot. As I opened the program, I had mentioned that, that you had been shot, you had been stabbed several times, run over with a car more than once. Three and, times. And, and also, uh, you were burned very severely. You were in a, ba a fire, and, 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 <coughs> was just, and you were almost drowned. Um, gee, Paul has nothing on you. <laughs> Tell us about those incidences. Uh, one of the times, um, and, and I, I was sharing with somebody that people say in the foxholes that there's no uh, atheist. And, and I, I beg to differ with that 
idea, that theory. Because several times in, in my life when I was that close to dying, and, and I knew it, uh, what would go through my, I remember in San Francisco one time I was stabbed and, and uh, I sort of was in and out, you know, and I was on my way to, to the hospital. And the, the lights, the yellow, I mean the uh, red glare would come inside the, the ambulance. And so I thought I was dying and on my way to hell. Somehow I figured, I pictured myself on the way to hell. Um, but never once did I think of the Lord. My thing was, I'm going to die. No more drugs, no more parties, no more booze, no more women, no more nothing. And, and that was my concern, that if I died... Because that was your life at the time. Yeah, I, mm -hmm. I you know, uh, uh, several times. And, and, and I was sharing with you earlier, uh, one of the times that I had been to Mexico, I was, I was high, that was my refuge. Uh, I, w I would go into some village down deep in, in, in the Mexican you know, jungles all the way down. And I would hide for however long it took to, to for the heat to clear. And, and uh, so I came back, and I had been drinking a lot of rut gut without eating and what have you. And, and uh, I got to my mom's, and my mom was watching my children. And I, I just started vomiting blood. I mean, it was just gushing out. And um, how she, she was able to, I don't know, but she helped me to her car, and, and she drove me to the veteran's hospital. And I remember when they were taking me from the receiving to the uh, ER there, that my mama was walking beside the gurney, and she said, why didn't you ask the Lord to help you? Because the nurse said, I had overheard the nurse telling her that I was pretty bad. And, and that, you know, I was bleeding so bad from inside that so mom said, why don't you ask the Lord to, um, to help you? And I, 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 rem I remember saying, no, I, why would I want to do that? I didn't need him, you know, before. I'm not going to ask him to do nothing for me now. Even though you could have died any second. Even though I could have died. Did you ever hear of hell and the torments and eternal I, tortures I did. of hell? I did. Did you not believe it? No, I, I knew it was real. But it, Nobody ever told me how to avoid but it. But you didn't, I see. See, they would tell me, you're a bad person, and, and you're a sinner, and you're going to die and go to hell. Okay. Duh, you know. Um, the people that try to witness to me, looking back, were not very sincere Christians. And, and, I, and I hope, you know, I hope people get to the point that they're led of the Spirit. Amen. Uh, very quickly, you only have a couple minutes left. Tell us how you found the Lord. Can I you didn't, do that? In a he wasn't minutes? lost. I was. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, we were wrestling cattle, and uh, my, my my cousin and I, and and uh, there was an announcement over the radio. If you're tired of the way you're living, et cetera, et cetera, call this number. Somehow, in in my confused, fogged up drugged up, drunked up state, I, I, I filed, and I know now was the Lord, and uh, some weeks later I called. They, they asked me to, to come in. It was a teen challenge, and, 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 and let me say this. I owe my life to the dedication of people like Dave Wilkerson. It was teen challenge. That, that, mm -hmm. that, that he allowed himself to be used in, in that manner Thanks because it, it, was, it was where the Lord had to put me to get me away from that to, you know, and, and I, I went down there on, in Tucson, and uh, a gentleman by the, by the name of Snow Peabody um, <laughs> prayed for me, and, and I bawled like a baby, and I was mad because I was crying. I, I don't cry. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, and, and here, he looked like he did not know the meaning of dirt. Mm. And, and, and when I'm, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm an ex-con, I'm an ex-this, that, and the other, and, 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 and I've hurt a lot of people physically and emotionally and every which way, and, and, and he's praying for me, but, but I, 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 it was this love that was coming from him, and I did not know what to make of it, and I started to cry. The love right? of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I cried, and I don't mean too, too little, I meant I... A cleansing cry. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, but I couldn't do it on my own because I, I would go back to what I knew. You know, 
Peter and the disciples, uh, uh, when, when, when the Lord was crucified, uh, that they found themselves without no Jesus, they, they went back to fishing because that, that's what they knew to do. And, and we humans do the same thing. If something doesn't go right, we go back to what we know to do. And I knew drugs. I knew the, the crime scene. I knew the, the you know, um, and I knew there was money there. And I, my life was that I would be eating steak and flying across country to go have lunch and back. Or I'd be f trying to find a, uh, um, a Salvation Army bin that I could crawl into and sleep because that was my home. So I, you know, I, I've been up and I've been down. The thing that bothers me is when people say, my worst day as a Christian was 10 times better than my best day as a sinner in that sense. I can't say that. The Bible says sin is pleasurable for a season. And, and, and the Lord will allow you to have that because then he's going to use that experience to help others. Amen. We've got to end on that note, Tony. We're going to continue this, though, Amen. the next program because you have a lot more to share. But I want to thank you so much for being here. A privilege. And I know... Be the honor. Amen. And I know that people have heard what you've had to say and let's pray that they receive it. Amen. Amen. And God bless you. Thank you. Welcome once again to Healing Miracles. I'm Joan, and I want to share with you what God has said in His Word. In Psalm 77, 14, God tells us that He is the God of wonders and miracles. And we want to share today some miracles that our guest has to share, and they're just numerous, and it just is a wonderful, it's going to be a wonderful time, and we want you to stay tuned and listen because you're going to be blessed. So let's welcome our guest, actually for a second time, Tony Perez. Thank you, Tony. Thank you. And I would say the biggest miracle that's happened in your life is that God delivered you from so many things, mostly drugs Amen. and alcohol and Amen. a spirit of rebellion that uh, almost did you in because it just led to all kinds of problems. And in the world, and looking at you as the world would look at you, you should have been dead many times because Amen. You were shot, you were stabbed five times, you were in a very serious fire, um, you were almost drowned, uh, you've been beaten up, you've been um, in a, you, as you worded it, insane as asylum. Um, literally. Eh, literally. And it just, uh, there's just so many things. And of course, when you were very young, your mom took you to a witch doctor and that's probably where all the court curses came from. We're going to talk a little bit about curses also. That's probably where the, the door was open. But, but again, uh, to fortify what you just said, the greatest miracle is when a man, a woman, comes to the Lord. Amen. Th that has got to be the 
greatest healing, the greatest miracle, the greatest deliverance, the greatest, you know, because that's what God came to do, and to set us a, free. And that keeps us out of hell. I, I was a prime candidate for hell. Now, you, you mentioned uh, the, the, uh, the witch doctors and what have you. You know, the door is opened for demonic activity in a person's life in a, in a lot of different ways, okay? Mine, I, I do believe it was that. Uh, that drugs, drugs is the devil's way of opening doors to your soul, to your mind. Mind altering. Mind altering. And, and so, it, the, the Bible says that in the last days, the, the witchcraft, it's yes. going to run rampant. But in the Bible, if you look up the word witchcraft, it, 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 it goes back to a word, uh, pharmakia, from where we get the word pharmacy from where drugs. So drugs are going to run rampant. Yes. And, and you know what's, what's happening today with, with especially the youth. And not, and not only the youth, Joan, but with middle-aged and, and, and uh, elderly people. Uh, there is more um, legal addicts Oh, I, I believe Because that. if you go to a senior citizen's home and, mm -hmm. and you look at the table, my God, it's like, you know. But going back, um, I, I do believe that that was the opening to the demonic a activity. And I remember praying and saying, devil, if you can get me out of this mess, you know, I'm yours. You actually prayed that oh, way? Yeah, uh, several times. Um, Several times, I, and I'm not saying once or twice, I, you know, a, a few times that I was facing really long prison sentences or, or whatever, uh, I would say, devil, you got to get me out of this one. And, and the funny part is this, later uh, in, 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 in life, when uh, I went in the military and, and I was stationed here close by at, at Fort Bragg, I, I, you know, became a paratrooper and Sneaky Pete and all this other nonsense. But I remember after... Uh, some dangerous jumps and, and what have you, that I, when I would be over it, I would say, devil, I beat you again. So it, it was like... You're always communicating with the devil. Yeah, and, mm -hmm. and, and I, by that time I knew, I said, something's not right here. Um, I should have been dead. Mm -hmm. When I was serving Satan, there was many times that I could feel the spirit of death try to come on me, literally. And I would kind of try to shake myself. And, and then I would stay awake because I knew that I, I would be drifting. See, people say the devil will not bother with a sinner. He, he just, after Christians, that's not true. The only person that's omniscient is, is my Lord Jesus. Got the Father, got the Son, got the Holy Spirit. Amen. So the devil doesn't know anything. Mm -hmm. or everything, let's put it that way. However, since he's been around since mankind, since before mankind, he's very smart. We have to give him credit. He's a, he's a worthy adversary. So, but he doesn't know everything. And he doesn't know if uh, uh, a Tony Perez is going to turn around, give his life to the Lord, and, and, and start preaching and telling people, look, there's hope. I don't care who you are, there's hope. Amen. There's no such thing as a hopeless person. If, if God saved me, but, but going back to, to the demonic thing, without knowing, we give ourselves over to Satan a lot. Okay, what do you mean by that? Explain that. By who we hang with. Mm -hmm. The influence. Demons, uh, uh, mm -hmm. demons and spirits are territorial. Okay? And, and, and if you go into a a demonic infested den, you're going to come out with some visitors. <laughs> Very good. And as a born-again believer, you don't have to worry about it because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen? Amen. So I, I don't fear Satan. Satan to me is, is somebody that has already been defeated. My Jesus led him captive and, and, and uh, I believe that. I'm just, I was so lost that when Jesus found me, uh, I believe the Lord. If the Bible says that the greater is he that is in me, it, that's the way it is, period, end of discussion. You know you know that bumper sticker, Jesus said it, I believe it, that settles mm -hmm. it? That's okay. wrong. It's totally wrong. Oh, 
Because if Jesus said it, that settles it. It don't matter if you believe it or not. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, so now we we open the door, either willingly or unwillingly. A lot of times through drug, a lot of, through trauma. Mm -hmm. You often uh, uh, know of people being um, bothered. Uh, uh, oppressed by, by, by demonic activity because of some trauma in their life. A, a lot of times, women especially, when, they, when they're little, little children, that they, they, they get molested and what have you, that, that opens the door. And if they don't know to how to recognize it, and they don't deal with it, and the churches are full of people sitting there Sunday after Sunday, and nobody says, look, you need to confess some things here. Pastors don't want to talk about it. It's, it's taboo. Uh, we don't understand it, so leave it behind. Um, but I started re recognizing in my life that some of the things I did were not normal, natural. And people say, what's normal? There is no, yes, there is. God made us to be normal. We went sideways. But when you get honest with yourself and you stand in front of the mirror and say, okay, what is wrong with you? Mm -hmm. the, the, the Holy Spirit will tell you, you know. And whether you understand that it's the Holy Spirit or not, you will know something is not right. You don't have to be a mechanic to know there's something wrong with your car. Amen? And so you, you, you get to recognizing these things, and then, and then you have to be honest and say, okay, there, there's something here that I need to deal with. I, I personally, I may be wrong, and, and uh, I personally don't believe that you have to go to quote unquote an exorcist to get rid of the demonic activity in your life because the bible says in mark 16:15 those that these signs will follow those that believe in my name they're going to cast out demons so if i'm a believer and i feel that i'm being oppressed by demonic activity i have just as much right because now I'm a child of the king. Mm -hmm. I did not know it. When I got saved, uh, uh, this, this gentleman uh, uh, prayed for me, and, and, uh, uh, um, and I bawled, and he gave me a Bible. And, and the first thing that I noticed was that little seal from the Gideons. Yes. And I had a flashback, because in my, in my travels, and I, and I traveled a lot, uh, I, I would check in a, in a, in a, in a hotel, and. I, right away, I would go through the drawers until I would find that Bible. And I would open the window and throw it out or open up the hallway and I throw it out. But I did not know why. I, it wasn't a conscious. I did not say, okay, now I must get rid of the Bible. It's in here with, no, it, it was just like an automatic thing, you know. How what, what do you <clears throat> think now about that? Why Listen, you did that? There's no demon in hell that's going to feel comfortable in front of God's that's word. That's right. I know that now. At the time, mm -hmm. I, at the time, I just it was something I did. Mm -hmm. um, Would you say you were possessed with a demon? Yes. Okay. Definitely. Um, and the reason I say that is because I I, accomp I did some things and got away with some things that I had to be empowered by Satan. Mm -hmm. God did not empower me to do those things. You know what I'm saying? God yes. will never empower somebody to do something wrong so that then he can get glory. No, that, that's not my Lord. You know? mm -hmm. so, so it was the other character. So, Tony, uh, I want to just stop you here for a little bit and talk a little bit about um, a generation curse. Okay. All right? Um, we talked a little bit about it on the last program but we didn't explain how you break that curse. Okay, now, when we speak of generational curses, it has to start somewhere. Yes, definitely. Okay. And maybe in, in my case, it started with me. I don't know, and I really don't care because I can't do nothing about the past. Mm -hmm. However, I have a 28-year-old son that when, when he was a little boy, he heard all the war stories of his father. 
and he admired the, his father BC before Calvary, you know. And and uh, they 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 would all often talk about the the shootouts with the police and the jail time and how I was a, a bad individual and don't mess with him and and all this other nonsense. And he sort of, uh, that sort of got glorified in his mind. That and the fact that, um, because when he was born, I was not saved. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so I, I passed on my seed into my children. Now, what I did was this, and I, I asked, I, I got on my knees, I said, Holy Spirit, show me how to break this thing. And, and it's very simple, Joan. First of all, you, you have to do a, an inventory, soul search, and, and see what's there in your own life. And then you have to admit it, and then you go, you go to God and you say, Lord, I opened the door. In my case, it was uh, often on purpose. And part of it was my mom, probably in ignorance. But then you, you have to say, Lord Jesus, you are stronger than anything that might be in me. And Excuse me. You're, you're, you're on a roll here. Look into that camera and talk to somebody and ask them to receive Jesus into their hearts right now. Explain what you're explaining right now and then go into the prayer. The thing is this, it, it does not matter if you've been a, a drug addict, a drunk, or a good sinner. My wife was a good sinner, but she didn't know Jesus. My wife was on her way to hell just as much as I was. But here's the thing, you can ask Jesus to come into your, it don't matter who you are, what you've been through, or who your mama was, or who your daddy was, it, none of that matters. The fact is this, Jesus is greater than any demon in hell, and the, li the devil is a liar. And what we need to understand is this, that if you bow your knee in your heart to the Lord, say, Lord Jesus, save me, save me. I, I want you to be my savior. I repent. I renounce my past. I renounce my sin. I renounce any form of demonic activity that I might have been involved with in the witchcraft. I, I, I just denounce it in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord God, just come and save me. The Holy Spirit will then come into your heart. Praise God. And you will be saved. And how will you know? Because the Word of God is going to bear witness. And again, if you have been in, in demonic activity yourself. Now that I broke this off of me, now I needed to go to my son, Joan. Yes. And I explained to him mm -hmm. that a lot of the things I did in ignorance, but some of the, uh, I did on purpose. So I said, Joel, you have to repent. You have to get down on your hands and knees. And you say, Lord Jesus, this generational curse, I, I broke it off of me. I broke it off of him. I said, but now you have two little boys. Now you, you have to do the same. Mm-hmm. Because if you don't, that, that, that it'll, 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 it'll pick, pick up again, and then it'll gain, gain momentum. So I think in my family, it's gone. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, thank and you, Jesus. And it will not come back because I refuse. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's true with some of the other things, such as alcoholism? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, people don't understand uh, why they call them spirits. Food and spirits. And I'm thinking, duh. Yeah. You know? Makes sense when you know the Lord. Uh, yeah. But but here's the thing, you say, I come from a long line of drunks. Well, they should tell you something. Mm -hmm. My father was a drunk, my grandmother was a drunk, and my dog was a drunk. By the way, I used to take my dog drinking with me. And he was good for a quart of beer, and then he would pass out on me. Oh, my goodness. A, 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 a vicious animal. My, oh. he, he, they had, you know, finally put him to sleep. But, but uh, he was see, probably possessed, too. He, uh, animals he was. Could, animals oh, yeah, could, possessed. definitely. Mm -hmm. Look at the pigs. Yes, That's where they the got devil ham mm -hmm. from. Oh. <laughs> but no, uh, you, you have to break that off yourself and then off your children. Yes. And, and, and alcoholism. And so, that's so important. If people could only realize how important that is. And then once we do that, we, we cannot allow ourselves or our children to get back into it. Um, today there are so many cartoons and programs geared toward the occult and the little children, 
who are our responsibility. We're responsible for their, their life and, and the truth in their life are, are watching all these things and they're being indoctrinated into the world of darkness. Um, Harry Potter's a horrible uh, example of that. And yeah. yet, even some Christian parents don't see anything wrong with it. So once we say this prayer, we have to monitor everything our children read, it's everything they watch, and if they give us uh, what we call a hissy fit, well, that's too bad because their life is on the line and we're responsible as well, as I said, and our life is on the line. You hear parents say, I, I can't do nothing with my son. What, what, well, how right. old is he? Uh, Three. Three, four. Mm -hmm. I said, well, wait a minute. Who's the parent who's, you know, but, but alcoholism, it has, it, it has, it's such an accepted thing, alcohol. Oh, a lot of people are into alcohol. Uh, lots and lots. There are, there are so many prescription drug addicts. Um, that true. That's so true. But here, anything that alters your mind, mm -hmm. it relaxes your guard so the devil can, you know. We well, you know the bottom line in drugs is money. A lot of drugs aren't, most drugs, I would say, aren't even necessary. As you said, the seniors, they, they put their drugs on the table, or they, they almost are boasting about, I take 20, oh, I take 24, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and can you imagine what that's doing to your body, let alone your spirit? Uh, I don't believe, I don't believe there's a doctor that can tell you this drug plus this drug plus this drug plus this glass of orange juice that you drank has this effect. No, th th there isn't. And you're right, it, it's all about money. Mm -hmm. It's all about money and greed. That's right. And in these last days, money and greed, you know, the love of money, it's not money. Mo money never hurt anybody. Mm -hmm. I, I, I love money <laughs> because I can give it away. Mm -hmm. You know, I tell pe some it's people. It's a gift say, from the Lord. Sure, and, and mm -hmm. people say, "Well, you shouldn't feel that." I said, "I want to be filthy rich." Mm -hmm. I said, "Can you imagine seeing a family and say, you know what? Write him a check, go buy him food, a uh, house, whatever they need." Mm -hmm. You know, the people that say, I, for some weird reason, people uh, holiness and dirt poor is the same to many people. Is and they and think or, or, or sickness to be right there, Joan. The, the, if you want to fire me up, tell me that God gave you this sickness to get some glory, <laughs> and, and you're going to have me on there you like a chicken that, on a bird. There bite. are so many people that believe that. And, and I, I, my my answer is, is, do you go to the doctor? Give me, well, yeah, give me strength so I can suffer. Yeah, mm -hmm. and and they say, and, and my my question is, is, do you go to the doctor? Well, yes, but then you're going against God's will because if God gave you that disease, you know, now you're trying to get out of God's will, so you better stay sick. And no, no, I don't want to. I said, well, then it's very simple. It's not God. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a wonderful miracle healing about five and a half years ago. The, the report of the doctor was that I had cancer and uh, it had gone into a more advanced stage in my body, but I never took so much as an aspirin. What I did is I got into the Word and I prayed the truth, and that, that's what we have to do. You know, when something comes into your life that you, that's bad, and you know it's not from the Lord, you don't give in to it, you Amen. fight it, you stand on the Word. And even if sometimes you don't see the results right away that you're looking for, you continue to stand and recite the Word, and God is not gonna let you down. He will never disappoint you. And, and don't listen to other people if they ridicule you or they, they, they make fun of you in any way whatsoever. Let them do what they want to do. Not. You keep your eyes focused on what Jesus Christ did on the cross 2,000 years ago because God gave his one and only son the perfect sacrifice and he couldn't have given any more. And because of that, we have healings, we have deliverances, and we just have everything and anything that is not of God that's not of God is dissolved, it's been taken care of, it's Amen. forgiven. It's forgiven. And once you're forgiven, accept that forgiveness. You know, th there's no problem that this little book here won't solve. Wh wh is salvation means wholeness, totality. Yes. Okay? Now, I don't know why people accept salvation from sin so readily and push away healing and, and deliverances. And, and, I don't and all. know. In Hosea, it clearly tells you that the God's people are perishing. 
yes. for lack of knowledge right. or lack of understanding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They need to get seek the Holy Spirit so they can get the anointing because it's the anointing is going to destroy the yoke. Right. It's not medicine. It's not uh, the psychologist. I had a psych. I had a beautiful healing. The, the Lord, my wife, and this other lady prayed for me, and and I I felt this thing leave me. Oh, praise God! And 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 uh, I, if you're a born again believer, your spirit cannot be possessed. But mm -hmm. the, but we are a three part being: spirit, soul, and body. And your soul and your body, your soul and your body is what gets attacked by the, by the demons, not your spirit. And so my wife and this lady had, had taken me to the hospital, and I was one sick puppy. And I had 26 bleeding ulcers. 26? 26. 26. They did the, the drink this and take the picture. and, and the they found, yeah, and, and I was I was bleeding. The, the, the only thing they could do for me is, is shoot um, crushed ice, tr try mm -hmm. to clog it. My wife and this other lady prayed, and I felt this release and this thing. And I knew I was healed. And I had checked that myself out of the hospital, the veterans hospital. And uh, so they prayed for you, and you felt the healing. I I, I felt this thing leave me. Mm -hmm. What do you think it was? A spirit? A spirit. Mm -hmm. a, sp a spirit that had attached itself to my to my to my in gut. Mm -hmm. And and uh, it had just attached itself and would not let go. Mm -hmm. and, and I was I was a, a born again believer, and, and but see I had left the door open mm -hmm. for the devil, mm -hmm. and I know it. My wife told the head doctor there, "My husband is healed. He will never be back to this hospital again." Praise God. And lady, you cannot say that. Yes, I can. My Jesus is the healer. Amen. And this doctor was furious, mm -hmm. so much so, Joan that my wife said, okay, do the test. So they did the test over again. There was nothing wrong with it. Oh, perfect. She kept insisting, and the, and the guy said, no, there, there was some mistake. So they had her see a, a psychiatrist. Really? Yes, ma'am. This guy insisted. This doctor was so insistent. Listen, doctors, Luke was a doctor. I, I, and God never rebuked him, so, so, so God uses doctors. God uses whoever he wants That's to. That's right. Now, we, we have to clarify that, that God can use a oh, medical doctor. He, he, he gave mankind the ability mm -hmm. and the know-how and the knowledge. Mm -hmm. And we have a doctor in our church that I love dearly. He's one of our elders, and, 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 and uh, I, I worked with him. And it, it was not uncommon for him to call said, come in here, we need to pray for this little baby. We need to, whatever. And you would see miracles. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, Do you remember any particular miracle regarding oh, something? Let me, let me finish this with, with oh, the, sure. this Go doctor ahead. that uh, mm -hmm. insisted that, that I couldn't have been healed. I told my wife, you're crazy. You need to see a psychologist, psychiatrist. They, they sent my poor wife over there. And, and then they sent me, too, because I was backing her up. And she said, oh. no, my husband will never be back here. Joan, that was... About 27 years ago, I've never been back. Oh. Two weeks after that incident, the doctor shot himself in the head. He committed suicide. No. Oh, my goodness. And he could not look my wife in the eye. Oh. Be, be, you know, it, it was a demon that would not allow him to receive what had happened. Yes, isn't that sad? This doctor that I was oh, telling you about, awful. they ran in and they handed him a dead baby. Mm hmm And, and uh, the nurse and the, the baby's mama came running and they just, you know, this is the doctor in your church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, uh, he, he said, I didn't know what to do. So I just started praying. He says, and this language came out. Oh, oh my goodness. And then he says, the baby started to breathe and to cry <gasps> by itself. Yeah? Beautiful. And he said, I handed it back to the mama. Uh -huh. and, and a couple of few months ago, I walked in his office, and he's carrying this little baby around all happy. Oh. And he said, this is the baby. Mm -hmm. So, you know, God heals. We have prayed for people in other countries, and, yes. and, and God has healed. At the, at the time that we were praying here, the, the Bible says God sent his word and he heals them, you know? Yes. And, and, and then he tells us, the, the, the thing is, is, you have to believe. Mm -hmm. Yes. The doctor can tell me, uh, you have lumbago of the upper earlobe or whatever that is. You know, and, and, and we say, oh, yeah, that's right. Well, that's a truth, but the truth is, 
the truth is that 2,000 years ago, my Jesus took that on his back. And by his stripes, I was, past tense, I was healed. Amen. And, and the greatest healing that we got it was our, our spirit, our soul, and our body was taken out of that mess that we were in. Mm -hmm. And most of us put ourselves in that mess. Mm -hmm. that, that because the Bible tells us that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. That's the Amen. only way. The only way. Amen. Regardless of what it is, that's the only way. This is going to sound like I'm coming against pastors, and I'm not. Our major focus on our ministry, Father's Cup Ministries. Praise God. Thank you, Tony. Changing one, redeem.